Hello everyone and welcome to Ellen with a Y goes live Tuesdays at 10. Oh, almost forgot. <laughs> Tuesdays at 10. Thank you so much for joining me. Everyone likes my top pinup pin up vibes. Oh my God, thank you. My hair is just like growing out. I don't know what to do. I like, I'm like not gonna cut it, but like I wanna cut it but I'm not gonna cut it, I won't cut it. Um, thank you all so much for joining me. You love my top, it's actually a dress. Like you can't tell, but like there's dress here. Um, obviously I'm probably, I'm wearing, I'm wearing sweatpants underneath. <laughs> when am I not? Thank you all so much for joining me this week. I'm so excited. This is the 64th episode. I'm like, this week I feel like I questioned myself a couple times, like, is it really the 64th episode? I was posting the 63rd episode. I was like, is it really 64? Are we sure? Um, but I, yeah, 64 episodes. I can't believe it. It's so wild to me that we've, I've been doing it for this long. It feels like totally natural. Sometimes I like even forget to prepare certain things. I'm getting like, maybe it's also because of quarantine. <laughs> All right, remember as we do before every episode, Take a deep breath, breathe, it's all gonna be okay. I feel like today is probably one of my more calm days and I think that that's because I actually took time for me today. I went on a walk while the sun was out. I talked to my Aunt Linda on the phone and it just, I think it like helped reset for me and not feel so frenzied and so caught up in like work. So, I don't know, I hope that everyone else gets a chance to do that. I take it, I don't do that enough. And I think that I'm telling myself I need to do this more and be accountable to doing that. So maybe other people need to hear it too. Just, it's okay, just go out for a walk. And like, it's also okay for that to be overwhelming. I feel like sometimes everyone's like, yeah, just like take a walk, go for a walk or like get outside. And it's like, to stop in the middle of everything I'm doing at work or like, you know, it sometimes is a lot. So it's okay if it's a lot. And it's okay if you don't get out, but it's good if you do get out. So it's all good. <laughs> um, I'm super excited. I have an incredible guest this week, and that guest is Elisa Kreisinger. I'm so excited. She is the head of digital for Full Frontal with Sam B on TBS and a former R29. -er. I'm so excited to have her on the show this week. It's like, Ah, the stars are aligning. I think I love I think I love Ellen with a Y in quarantine because I can have everybody on the show that it used to be everyone came here to do the show and I'm kind of obsessed with having everyone just go live with me from anywhere. I have people coming live with me from, you know, the West Coast, from New Jersey, a fellow Jersey girl. So everyone stay tuned for Elisa. I'm so excited to have her on this week. Uh, so that brings me right into my hot topics, which I found myself weeding through a lot of very heavy, very negative to hot topics in the world, a lot of cancel parties, which I can I can't with like cancel culture, but like a lot of cancel parties, a lot of just really sad news. So, and then I found myself like looking for topics to discuss. And then I was like, well, you know, if there's no news, there's no, like if there's something fun or happy or upbeat to like talk about, like that's okay. So hot topics of like hot topics in my life. I left New York for the first time this weekend. I socially distanced, saw my parents for the first time in their space versus them doing a drive by and bringing me a bagel. Thank you. Um, and it was really nice to actually uh, like get outside of the city and see more trees than just like the one that's planted around the corner. Um, and so like that is the hot topic for me. I feel like maybe that also is contributing to my like overall sense of calm. I feel like there's just so much drama in the world. Like we could talk about call her daddy or call me daddy or call her daddy or whatever the heck that's called. But like, uh, it just feels like so, so heavy. So, uh, I don't want to, I don't know. I don't want the heavy. I don't know. Maybe am I like trying to ignore, I'm not trying to ignore the like heavy negative things that are growing on. I feel like I'm participating in that conversation, but like, this is supposed to be uplifting and positive. So, you know, send me like a thumbs up if you guys are also just kind of like over the news. Also, I feel like there's been a lull in all of the like, concerts that all the different outlets have been put were putting on like what happened 
all of the all of the all of the artists like are done performing they did their one quarantine performance they're like i'm over it i don't want to do it we've all spoken at every single commencement digitally that we can get to we've done all of these different live streams world health organization fundraiser for xyz like the celebrities are like we're tired now so goodbye um Oh, Gabby's got the got the lowdown. Dropkick Murphy's on Friday with Bruce. Ooh, Bruce. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, well, if Bruce is coming out. That's exciting. So this was just my vibe for this week. I was like, why does it always have to be, you know, forget Hot Topic. So there's not really much going on. If you follow JoJo Siwa, there's stuff going on there. But it's like, also, it's like, it's all not like light and uplifting. It's all just like, ugh. Twitter. It feels very Twittery. It feels like Twitter news. So I'm not into it. So that moves me into my what to watch to watch segment this week which i did my job as a power watcher this weekend it was raining and i got some good binging in some good like one season only stints and i have like the next couple weeks we are set this week i am so excited to promote i literally sat on this one for a while i didn't watch it because i knew i was gonna like it a lot and so i was just like okay i'll like wait to watch it the great on hulu was so great. <laughs> I feel like I'm like the thousandth person to like say that. So, ugh, can't even say thousandth per person. Anyway, The Great on Hulu with Elle Fanning. She actually was a producer on the show and uh, Nicholas Holt. It circles around the rise of Catherine the Great in Russia. Um, I didn't actually really know the story that well, even though there's been a ton of like, I mean, I took history classes and I also there's been a ton of like movies and stories about it it was really good it kind of had like a Sofia Coppola vibe to it I don't know if anyone's like familiar with um kind of the way that she makes films and like what she's created I'm trying to think Marie Antoinette she did with Kirsten Dunst kind of that, like punk rock like historical fiction kind of thing it was it was fiction, nonfiction. It was very loosely based on the actual historical events. Let's just all go with that. Very loosely based, but it was really good. And also, if you liked Normal People on Hulu, one of the characters from Normal People had a prominent role in The Great. I won't spoil it. I won't say who, but I, I liked, I saw that. I was like, oh my God, look, look at Hulu. Because Netflix does that. Netflix puts people in other shows and like helps build careers. And like, I'm excited to see that Hulu is doing the same. So go Hulu, the great. It was really good. It was very, um, very modern. Um, Marie Antoinette, so good. AKA Sam Sorny, yeah, blah, blah. Hot topic, hacked Hulu account. Oh yes, that was the hot topic. My brother-in-law's Hulu account was hacked. And I am a legal user of your Hulu, I believe. So uh, that was really difficult. That was like a hardship that I dealt with this weekend. Uh, obviously Wayne had a lot more to deal with than I did. <laughs> I'm just pestering him for the new password, um, which I like the new password. And um, it, yeah, so the, the great on Hulu, like fantastical, funny, like really crass, really like just, be comfortable with a lot of like yelling of words and like huzzah, which is so fun. Huzzah. <laughs> it was like huzzah and they were breaking plates and it was like in my big fat Greek wedding and everyone was like saying opa, like how the Greeks do. So it was great. It was really good. I hope you all enjoy watching it. It was just fun and enjoy. <laughs> I literally, I just feel like I want anything that's like fun and light. it's not so light, but light. So enjoy that. That moves me into my food for thought segment this week, which actually came up when I was visiting my parents. So um, <laughs> I think it's really funny, like, and tell me if you agree, please get your thumbs ready. But it, you kind of know the household that you grew up in. If, okay, I'm trying to say this in a way that's like, ha like not, <laughs> If you have empty soap bottles or almost empty soap bottles in the bathroom in the kitchen and you either fill them up with water to like get the extra soap down the edges or <laughs> buy a new soap but you don't like the bottle of that soap so you put the new soap into the, the old bottle because the old bottle was prettier. If you grew up in that kind of a household, 
I relate to you. <laughs> That's how I grew up. That's the household I run. <laughs> I feel like there's like some kind of a connection that people may have about trying to make the soap last longer. I, I don't know, just being economical. Also, my so my soap that I currently have in my bathroom, I really like the, the bottle of it. My mom got it. She just like passed it along to me because I liked the scent when I went to her house. She got it from Costco. And I literally, like, I really like the, I finished it. I really like the bottle. So I got a new soap from some random soap. And I'm like, pour, I was like pouring it into the old, the, the old soap container. And I'm like, wait, is anyone going to be freaked out that it says like coconut lime, but it's actually lavender? Like, hopefully no one cares. I'm getting a lot of people. I do that as well. Okay, Candace, Gabby, the soapy water is. A Jersey City staple. I love it. Downtown Jersey City. Mama bought the refill mega bottle. No game. Yeah. Refill bottles. Definitely. I do that in my kitchen. Um, poor people problems. Pretty sure my family thinks bottle soap is too fancy. <laughs> Fanula. Oh my God. So funny. So if anyone relates to it, which you guys clearly do, I feel like that is just, I don't know. That's like a story of my childhood, something growing up. I know, I know I have family members that can relate to it. So I'm glad to be able to see other people relating to this, that, you know what, use that soap to the last drop. I literally, I mean, that's me though. I literally use everything to the very, 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 very last drop. Um, <laughs> so let's be economical together. High five. <laughs> I see it. Oh, that's my mom. I I love huzzah when you were little on the swings. Oh yeah, we used to sing. We used to say huzzah when we were on the swings. I do, oh, mom. Um, okay, so that brings me to the guest portion of my show. So I'm gonna get ready to bring Elisa on the show. Uh, so everyone, get ready. Here we go. Uh oh, I don't see. How do you search? Pop culture. Oh no, Elisa, where are you? Uh oh. Are you here, pop culture pirate? Elisa, where are you? I'm like looking, I don't see. Viewers. Okay, let's go. Let's see if maybe it's in the. Mm. No, she's not here. What happened? Uh oh, did something happen? Oh no. Let's see. I sent her the live again. Oh my gosh, speaking about like, oh, there you are. Okay, how do I go live? Report comment, hide live video from, no, pin comment. No, but how do I go live with you? Why can't I like click you to go live with? Let me try again. Let's find you. I'm like, what is going on? I may have to stop this and start again. Oh, Instagram, you, you sly devil. You make things easier and you make things harder. They updated um, Instagram so that the lives go straight to IGTV, which is like great. Yeah, maybe leave and come back. Yeah, try that. I don't know why. I mean, we're like, I follow you, you follow me. Like, what's the problem? Hide live video. No, I don't want to hide it from you. Yeah, so, oh, there it is. View, yes. Go live. Oh, we did it. We're doing it. This is so exciting. Oh, I love when we win against technology. We did it. Hi. Hello. Hi. How oh, are my God, you? that worked out so well. I was like, uh-oh. You're so well lit. I guess I need a ring light. Is that the moral of the story? Girl, 64 episodes in, we had to wow level up. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, my God. You look amazing. Thank my you. light well, is so yellow. There's a but ring a light. Candle. There's a box light. There's makeup. It's like a whole thing. There's a whole yeah. production here. One of these days, I'll do like a behind the scenes episode and just show everyone what it looks like because it's, it's a bit of a setup. <laughs> oh, my God. I love that. Yes. Love that. How it well, gets made. Welcome, everyone. I want everyone to welcome Elisa to the show. Thank you so much for joining me. You guys can follow her at Pop Culture Pirate on Instagram, which will make sense once we chit chat. I'm so excited that you're here and you're on the show. Thank you for joining me. 
Oh my gosh, my total pleasure. I'm so excited to finally be here. It's amazing that you are up and verbal so late, by the way. Like, Some nights are better than others, I will say. <laughs> but I'm really excited because, Elisa, you are yes. an award-winning writer, producer, host, interviewing major celebrities such as Glenn Close, Tan France, and Maggie Gyllenhaal, to name a few. You're a Women in Technology Fellow at NYU School of Engineering and the Head of Digital for Full Frontal Sam B on TBS. And you're from New Jersey. <laughs> it's Big true, we both have 201. Yes, we do both have 201. <laughs> Big deal to have on the show. I'm so excited that you're here. And I feel like when I met you, we were, we were both at Refinery29, which is like, I feel like everyone on the show is yes. from, from Refinery at some point. And shout out to all the people like coming into the comments uh, from Elisa's account. Thank you for joining. Look at you, pulling them in. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we met at Refinery, but can I feel like I want to take the story back to before Refinery because you were a video artist creating video mashups of popular footage um, in pop culture, but like using the footage to change the meaning. And so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how you got started in creating mm -hmm. art through the video medium. Yeah, sure. Um, well, it was 2006 or seven and YouTube had just flourished and this was like before anybody had, well, there were iPhones. I can't believe that I'm like having to explain this, but like there were iPhones, but the video quality wasn't good. And I didn't really, I mean, I knew how to shoot stuff, but I didn't have an actual camera or I did have a camera. It was just like a bulky process. And I wanted to participate. I really wanted to work in TV. I really wanted to be a writer. Um, and like write these narratives that I was seeing on TV, but like I knew it was such a fucked up sexist industry that I would never survive in ever with like an ounce of a critical thinking skill in my yeah. brain. So I just started taking TV shows that I loved and re-editing them. I knew how to edit. Um, I had like Final Cut Pro at the time was like the good the <laughs> That's the level up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then it got really shitty, but at the time it was great. And uh, yeah, I would just take apart TV shows that I really liked and then piece them back together in the narrative that I wanted to see and make. And that just happened to be like making, I, I just, it was at the time where there weren't a lot of like women on television. I know that feels like such a dated narrative, but mm. I just wanted to take apart these TV shows and then put them back together and make mashups and remixes in a cool way that like, um, reflected this, the stories that I wanted to see. So I did that with Sex in the City. I did that with like every Real Housewives franchise with Mad Men. <laughs> um, anyway, they were considered video art, which I, great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, so I showed them in galleries and stuff and it was amazing. It was so much fun. I got to travel all over the world, um, but YouTube kept removing them for copyright violation. And they kept thinking that they were full episodes of Mad Men or Sex in the City or Real mm. Housewives. Um, and so I got really into changing the policy around YouTube. Um, at the time, a lot of people were doing this. Like, I don't know if anybody remembers that documentary, Everything is a Remix. Remix and mashup was like a big part of like the vernacular at the time. Um, and yet like YouTube was positioning itself as like uh, the, like the central square for, for video content, but they weren't nice. allowing like huge swaths of people to participate. Anyway, um, I got involved in like the activism, I guess, around allowing YouTube to make more money by letting us put <laughs> our content up. Well, yeah, um, I mean, because if they're flagging you for copyright, you know, your content's coming down. I feel like everyone thinking in terms of copyright is like kind of, it can kind of seem like, oh, wait, I don't understand what that means, but it's basically like, the reason why my IG live shuts down sometimes is because I've played a song that I don't have the copyrights to and Instagram can immediately hear the audio and will shut me down. So yeah. like it has gone, it has come so far that it's instantaneous. Like my lives get shut down because I don't have copyrights. So yeah. it's applicable now. Like people try to post something to TikTok, but they don't have the copyright to the audio. Mm -hmm. So then it gets taken down. So I feel like it's really, 
so cool that you were involved in the activism and involved in like going in front of Congress to to change laws around like creativity on the internet. Thanks. That's like so generous. In reality, I mean, it, it, it was activism, but it feels weird to say that like with the news happening that like that's considered activism. But like, yeah, it was like, basically, I made YouTube more money <laughs> by by talking to Congress and by testifying in front of Congress. But yeah, it was so that creators, most of whom were women, by the way, mm -hmm. um, could get their shit back up on YouTube. Because you have to remember too, like, at the time, if you had a YouTube URL or like your link, and it was embedded and you got press, and then that link got removed for copyright violation, all your embeds went down. So any press you got, all your embeds wow. were killed. So we yeah a bunch of women we all got together and we testified congress and we got um exemptions made to the digital millennium copyright act um and that allowed basically video to flourish across social platforms um and then the work was also used in a white paper uh for the u.s copyright office so that gifts if you can believe it like gifts were like illegal at the yeah. time that's it's crazy just so, it's so crazy and silly um but yeah, it's just a way for people, like you mentioned TikTok earlier, like it's just a way for people to participate in culture. And if like certain people are getting silenced in that, then that's a problem, especially when people are making money, like billions of dollars off of our labor. Um, the least we can do is help you make more money by being allowed to publish our content. Yeah. And like, Uh oh, let's see. Did it pause for everyone? Oh, oh no. You're, back. You're good. It was just paused for a second. Okay. Okay. Oh, Jesse, she said, that's so awesome. One of the reasons why I watch this show is that I never would know about something like this, but I, that is really such a great thing to know about. Like, it is. And I feel like that's why I was so excited to have you on to talk about the fact that, like, what we enjoy and, like, the freedoms we enjoy right now on the internet and being able to create freely. Obviously, yes, there are still a lot of, like, copyright. You're not just going to straight up steal someone's stuff. <laughs> but there's a lot of freedom that we might not have had had you guys not actually taken a stand and done something about it. Like, the internet that we enjoy today wouldn't exist. And the fun that we have. And, like, TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah which yeah. is a, it's become funny a to favorite. think about in retrospect but yeah the things that we do like with popular culture as a language um yeah is it's, it's so part of the language parlayed into you becoming an nyu fellow with the school of engineering that like that like tripped me up i was like wait how did engineering come into play <laughs> computer it's really like computer science computer engineering yeah so i got involved with this congressional testimony to essentially lobby youtube to stop taking down like swaths of women's own stories that they were participating online with right using yeah. copyright copyright material um which by the way is totally legal it's called fair use we can get into that if anybody has questions like <laughs> happy to answer them um but we weren't doing anything illegal um and then, so that led to, I was showing a bunch of work in galleries and actually somebody asked me, I don't know if you're going to ask me this later. So okay. I might be beating. Okay. But somebody asked me, they were like, why are you spending so much time like fighting the law that's keeping your work from being published? Why not just make new work? And I was like, yeah, uh, profound. Uh, that's a really great question. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, and that was when BuzzFeed was getting started. I was an artist in residence. I was interviewing Jonah Peretti, who ended up starting BuzzFeed. Um, and he may or may not have been the person that asked me that. Um, <laughs> but he, but anyway, so the result of that was just getting involved with startup culture at the time and new media and tech companies. Um, and so part of that movement, I became a fellow at NYU School of Engineering. Luc Dubois runs that program. Um, for anybody interested, it's an amazing, amazing program uh, that gets like women, people of color, just like at swaths of people involved in making like cool shit on the internet. 
um, and funding them and giving them the tools to do so. So I was able to get funding to go get my master's in engineering, which was a huge, um, yeah, a really fun, amazing opportunity. And I just got a window into like that small, it seems small now, because the startup bubble is burst. But like, <laughs> this was at the time when like, WeWork was huge, and Uber was huge. And everybody was like, it's like Uber, but for uh, seltzer, I, you know, mm. it was like, so that yeah, analogy um, was so big back in like when everything was starting it was like it's uber yeah. for this it's this for the comparison like you have to be able to explain you have to be able to explain it without using someone else's app right. <laughs> but at the time people were just throwing tons of money at anything that had a good pitch i mean it was a yeah. bubble right like we all know now it was a bubble so going into refinery how we met i came out of nyu and i was like oh i can see through the bullshit now. So like every, if everyone's positioning themselves as a tech company, mm. like what does that actually mean? When you come from like a tech, like world where I had come from, you're, it's like, okay, content, how does that scale? Mm. It's not automated. You can't, uh, you, it needs humans to write it. Yep. So how much money can that really net? What does that mean for a business model? What does that mean for automation? Um, so as I was going into refinery, it was kind of just like, this is so interesting to look at the fact that newsrooms haven't changed yeah, ever, Never. Um, but yet we're thinking of media companies as startups. So what does that mean in this new world? Anyway, so that's, yeah. kind of and, that's all and that's fascinating. I feel like it's also kind of the space that I, I like live in the in-between of revenue and content. And I feel like that's where we were able to meet and, um, I was always such a fan of what you were working on at Refinery. And then to see you take and showcase women's stories and, and news that's important to women and make it digestible in a way um, that everybody can understand. Because I feel like something I talk about a lot on the show is like when to start paying attention to news and like not to overwhelm yourself with everything because it can start to be too, too much. And mm. I love that then that experience and everything that's brought you up to this moment brings you then to TBS and full frontal where you're head of digital marrying the technology side of things with creating content with pushing women's women's issues and women's initiatives forward like that's so mm -hmm. awesome so how you're you're yeah. literally helping to create content for a show in quarantine like how does that <laughs> work yeah, it's been really, really interesting. I, I mean, I think, oh, where to begin? It's like, no, just to go back to the technology side, like none of this, I feel this is my conspiracy theory slash hypothesis, <laughs> but like none of, none of this, even this would not have been possible two years ago. Like our home internet speeds would not have been fast enough to like be able to send tons of video back and forth via Slack via text, uh, via, you know, Google Drive, we would not be able to have the upload speeds that we have. Um, we wouldn't have the cameras with like awesome facing front, front facing cameras. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, it's kind of amazing that it's all happening now, because I don't feel like we or, or a lot of TV shows would be able to do what they do from home uh, with technology. That was no, any, no way. No, because it's younger. I mean, just seeing some people's at-home setups, like I had um, Emily Curl on a couple weeks ago and she was telling me that it took almost like two weeks to get all of everything together, right? But like the pictures of everything and like the setup and the ethernet cord and I mean, it, it's wild. Oh, it, yeah, I believe it. I believe it. I mean, Emily Curl's setup is like legit. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty legit. It's like, like it's very legit. legit. I mean, Shout I have to... overhead light on. I'm, this is such a terrible example, but I'm not well, you're in front of the camera to, very long. You're helping to have the, make the content, right? So like Sam B is the one that has to stand. So she's a lot of everyone that's not, doesn't know or hasn't watched it. She's like standing in the woods a lot of the times with her husband filming her. And it is just like, so, I mean, it's, you know, in the, uh, the other late night shows that are, you know, filming with family members or kids running through it's it's just so human I just personally really love it so you guys are doing a really good job definitely follow not only Elisa pop culture pirate but also follow full frontal for these really really yeah. good videos 
Oh, thanks. Yes, please follow Full Frontal. Um, and then if you go to our YouTube page tonight, actually, we just launched a new series. Um, so if you want to see how the show is made in quarantine, uh, we just finished episode one, which I think Anthony Zaccone is in this chat. I saw him earlier. Yes. Also an R29 alum. Yeah. Um, and uh, he is producing that. Um, and yeah, it launched uh, tonight. So if you want to see how it actually gets made behind the scenes, check it out. Uh, it's on the Full Frontal YouTube channel. Oh my gosh, exclusive guys. Everyone rush. Exclusive. <laughs> rush to the YouTube account. I'm going to go. You watch. Are I in love. Here first. I know, finish this and then go watch. <laughs> I love. Oh my God, Anthony's watching. Hi. You were there when I got my haircut. Anthony was on set. He was filming when uh -huh. I got my haircut. Um, um, I also uh, saw Anissa. Yes, Anissa. you see Anissa said such One a nice note. Favorites. Anissa, so I love sweet. you. I miss you so much. Oh my um, god. Also exclusive, Anissa is going to be on the show next week. No way. Yes. Oh god, I am honored. I am so honored to be yes. oh my followed gosh. by Anissa. Wow. <laughs> I'm honored that you all even watch the show, that Anissa watches the show. I'm like freaking out. This show has reached peak. I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm so excited to watch that series. I love all of these, you know, talk show hosts from home, but like to see how it's getting done. And maybe it's because I'm doing like a very small version of that. So I'm curious, like what it looks like for other people. But there are so many people that w work on these shows. There's writers rooms, producers, there's talent, like there's so many people. So it's, it's going to be really interesting. I'm sure to see actually how that all comes to life. So I'm super excited. I can't be I, I you guys nail on the head for the content that I want to see. Oh, I'm so good. I'm so 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 glad and there's going to be six episodes, hopefully more. Um, so yeah, so tonight's just the first one. Stay tuned for more and you'll see how every department is working in quarantine, essentially, uh, to put together a weekly topical late night show and make it funny. Uh, yeah, in quarantine. I love it. Oh, I can't wait to watch. Well, to keep the fun rolling and do something else that's funny, we have a baby itty bitty little game to play. <laughs> okay, great. So I just have a couple of um, I have this really funny book of 3,000 would you rather questions because it's easier to get them from the book uh, <laughs> than sometimes it's a little bit hard to be that creative every time and come up with them on my own. Um, so I have a couple of how, would you rather. So you just sit back, relax, and tell us how you'd handle the situation. <laughs> would you rather... Hold on, since there's so many refinery people here, like this is, I think my major takeaway from refinery was merchandising shelves. And I just wanted <laughs> you to know that I, that's, that they, those shelves aren't really even, but they're merchandised. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Oh my God, I love it. It looks so good. Even, wait, the candle? Yes, the candle is lit. There we go. Let me move so my shoulder. So but cute. your setup looks so good too. Will you do a behind the scenes video for people? <laughs> I feel like I should now. I, yeah. I've, I've actually never done like a full behind the scenes of like the, the show setup. Um, I think we need it. I think the people need to see it. Right? Because honestly, yeah. the shelf below this is not cute. <laughs> <laughs> this all looks good. The rest is a mess. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll do that. I'll do, I'll film a little BTS. Awesome. I love it. Yeah, look, okay, you want it? Okay, I'll do it. I did my makeup once and people like that. So <laughs> I was like, let's be a beauty blogger for a day. Okay. Would you rather, and everyone can play along, give the people what they want. Um, everyone can play along. Very fun, lighthearted. Would you rather? I love how you have to stress that. This is fun and lighthearted. Yeah, because it's like, <laughs> Sometimes, well, some of these, one time I read one and I was like, oh, I hate that. <laughs> it's like, okay, all right. I was well, like, I read it and then I, fun and and like, like, I read them and then sometimes I'm, I like go back and read them for the show and I'm like, what was I thinking? Why did I, I was like, who approved this? <laughs> okay, so would you rather eat cantaloupe skin or avocado skin? Cantaloupe. Oh my God, me too. Yeah, it feels more watery. I feel because like I've accidentally, you know, when you eat an avocado and like you kind of get the edge of the skin meets the avocado and it's yeah. super bitter. I feel yeah. like 
I could just muscle through cantaloupe skin. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Sarah also agrees. Cantaloupe. Yes. So does Jenny. Yeah. People agree with the cantaloupe. I like it. Okay. Would you rather have a plant or a goldfish that talks to you? Um, hmm. And I, I know people that talk to their plants and to their goldfish. Right. But which would you prefer to talk back? I guess a goldfish. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I, want, I don't want my plant to be like, you don't pay attention to me. You don't really water me. You don't deserve me. Oh, I'm not very much. I'm not much of a green thumb. It's like, I feel like that plant is still alive by sheer will. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Well, that's why succulents, right? They thrive on neglect. <laughs> Such a millennial plant for so many reasons. I know. It's so true. <laughs> oh my God. Everyone's got a lot of feelings about goldfish, goldfish, plant, plant. Goldfish have no memories. Mom, that's a song. Annie DeFranco. Um, <laughs> we're going deep into the archives. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> it's like a deep family memory. <laughs> Wait, Ellen, I need to know the story behind how do you know that that's an Annie DeFranco song? Oh, I love Annie DeFranco. She's a bit. She, we listened to her, um, was it Little Classic Castles album? Yeah. Like, Growing up, so my dad was, my dad's super into music, and that's, I'm really, really, really into music because of him and my mom, and growing up in the car, like, my parents definitely controlled the radio, and my dad had all these, like, CDs, and we used to listen to the Little Plastic Castle. I mean, I honestly know that album oh. back in front. Oh, my like, gosh, that's amazing. Wait, do you like Ani DeFranco? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it well, wasn't a part of my childhood, but it was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that album with the like little goldfish face. Yes, yes. It's like I iconic. I went to an all girls high school for a year. Um, and then I went to an all women's college. And I think like, it's just part of the curriculum. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so. my dad was the only man in a house of women. So I feel like he was definitely promoting a really pro female agenda. <laughs> We also listened to um, Dar Williams, which I feel like is a lesser. Oh wow! Artist. You know, okay, yeah. yeah, Dar Williams. We love yeah, Dar. Williams. Yeah. I just took them. I took them to see Dar Williams perform in Brooklyn before all of this. Oh wow! Oh, that's yeah, so little. Nice. Yeah, we were big fans. That's so, so nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's it's awesome. Cute. Yeah, that's my, my dad sister. Dad really liked um, Sweet Honey in the Rock. Oh, there you go. Oh, no, no. Anyway, no. A lot of folk. Folky, I know I like that little... sound though. I like that sound. Yeah. I'm gonna have to go yeah. listen to it. I'm always listening to you. I love it. Sweet Honey in the Rock. Yeah. I I like I I if I I'm gonna listen to it. I'll put it on the um Ellen with a Y playlist. I've started creating a playlist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love it. It's like songs from childhood. No, truly. Oh my god, if you could see all my playlists. My playlists are very um my playlists are very, uh, I, I don't know, they're like, they're like little jokes to myself. Yeah. <laughs> so all the oh, names of them are nice. all really funny. Uh, yeah, that's my sister, the memories right now. Annie and Dar, yes, love. Oh my Aww. gosh. Thank you so much, Elisa, for coming on the show. I hope everybody follows Pop Culture Pirate. You obviously get the reference now. We're all on the inside, <laughs> Pop Culture Pirate. Um, thank you so much for agreeing to come on the show. And oh, I, thank you. I'm so grateful. And I'm so grateful to know you. You are such a fierce, powerful woman, someone who like, looks into things and learns about things and then shares that with others. I love that. That's so important oh. to me. And I just I'm so excited that you came on the show tonight. Thank you so, so much for having me. It was so great chatting with you. I feel like it was way too short. I feel like we could keep talking until 11. Um, but thank you so much for having me. And it was so, such an honor to be on your show. Thank you so much for doing the show and for oh. bringing the R29 people back. Yes. <laughs> it's like a reunion show. <laughs> yes. I love, I love it. it. Thank you. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Bye. So much fun. I love Elisa. We used to chit chat during the work day. She'd come over. I worked in an area called the shop and we be something work related obviously we'd be doing work but then we would just be catching up and chit-chatting and 
Um, I'm so grateful that you came on the show. And if everyone definitely tune in to Full Frontal, Samantha B, check out the Instagram, all that content premium and the new YouTube series that Elisa and her team and Anthony put out. It's going to be awesome. I'm so excited. I love all that behind the scenes stuff. So if you guys want behind the scenes of Ellen with a Y, I can do that. That's no problem. I'll film that. I, what else am I doing? <laughs> what else are we doing during quarantine? If you have any other things you want to see, I can do a time lapse of the puzzle. I'm on puzzle number two. Um, so let me know. I sound like such a YouTuber. Oh my God, I can't take it. All right. Thanks everyone so much for watching. I hope the show brought you a little bit of joy, a little bit of laughter and put a smile on your face. If you catch yourself smiling while watching the show, that's the whole point of the show. I hope that this can be 30 minutes of fun, a half hour of happiness in the midst of everything going on in our world. And that if you enjoy the show and try to share either the show or share a smile with someone else, if you can, I think that spreading smiles maybe it's like a yawn like if you're yawning someone else yawns if you're smiling maybe we can get somebody else to smile so thank you all so much for watching thank you elisa for coming on and i will see you next week on tuesday bye hi everyone thanks for watching to subscribe to my channel click here and to watch more videos click here be sure to like comment and hit the bell so you get notified every time i upload a video